Welcome to Blackboard discussion number two on Monopoly. Now, this time we're going to talk about profits. And what we want to know is, how do monopolies maximize profits? What are they about? What are they going to do? Well, they figure it the same way. They look at their total revenues, they subtract their total costs, and that gives them an idea of their profits. So they're going to try to do something like maximize profits. So the first thing we're going to look at is, uh, revenues and then we're going to compare it to cost and we're going to do this kind of hmm, same kind of how do I make this as big as possible it turns out when you maximize profits you do something you equate marginal costs and marginal revenue just like in a pure competition model the trick is that we have to think about marginal revenue all over again let's think about total revenue well for a monopoly they could make zero, one, two, three, four, maybe five things, five goods, quantity. Well, what if they wanted to sell five things? What would they do? They would have to price the fifth thing in a certain way. We'll call it $122. If they price it at $122, they'll be able to sell five. Now, the funny thing about this monopoly is they don't just take this price. They set a price. They could raise the price to $162. If they raise the price to $162, guess what? Higher price, people don't buy as many. They only buy one. So they would lower the price maybe, $152. Oh, now they can sell two. $142. Oh, now this monopoly could sell three. $132. Oh, now things are interesting. They can sell four. $122. Five, a hundred and twelve dollars, six, whoops, not six units, and so on, and so on. So, hmm, this is the quantity, this is the price. See the difference here? They're not just taking a supply and demand, market supply and uh, demand, and getting the price and accepting that price like we did over there in perfect competition. No, they can decide what price. Well, they're going to decide the price they're going to set to maximize their profits. Well, we move forward. Let's calculate out our total revenues of selling one unit under $162, our total revenues $162. Two units, $152, our total revenues $304. $426, because at $142 we sell three. And $528, because at $132 we sell four. $610, because at $122 we sell five. 672 because at $112 we sell six and so on and so on. Well, does that tell us how to maximize our profits? It would if we knew our total cost, but let's move forward and figure out our marginal revenue for this particular thing. Well, going from zero to one, looks like our marginal revenue is 162. Going from one to two, marginal, how much more revenue do we get if we increase our production by one, is it 304? No, that's the total revenue. It's this difference here. This is what we get, is the difference between these two things. And the difference between 304 and 162 is 142. That's the marginal revenue of producing the second unit. How about the marginal revenue of producing the third unit? Again, it's 426, subtract 340, 304, and you get 122. How about the next unit? Do the same kind of subtraction. 528, 426, you get 82. 610, I mean 102. 610, 528, that's when you get 82. 610, 72, that's when you get 62. Look at this marginal revenue. It looks like it's going down, doesn't it? It's a matter of fact. If you actually graph the demand curve for a monopolist, it would look like this. And at every unit, let's say one, what would be the demand if you priced way up here at 162? The demand would be one. What if you lowered the price to 152? The demand would be two. That's how you get the demand curve. Now at 142, it would be three, and so on. What about marginal revenue? Well, what's the marginal revenue of the second one? It's 142, not 150, 200. So it's kind of below it, isn't it? That's what it is. The third one's below it again, 122, and so on, and so on, and so on. 
So for marginal revenue, you end up with a curve that looks like that. And it's these numbers that we're diagramming here. It's these numbers. So when we come back, we're going to talk about profit maximization. We're going to look at the marginal. You know what? It's very simple. Actually, when you select a marginal cost equals marginal revenue curve situation, you're maximizing profits, just like in perfect competition. Marginal cost equals marginal revenue here. You find out what the perfect quantity would be. You then go up to the demand curve to figure out how much you should sell it for. You come over here and you say, aha, $142 is what I'll sell it for. I'll produce three units. My marginal revenue will be this much. My marginal cost will be this much. And that's how much I'll maximize profits, just like a perfect competition. If I produced two, that wouldn't maximize my profits. Because if I produce one more unit, the cost is way down here. The revenue is way up there. I get all this extra cost over revenue. I get more. I get more profits. This is the profit maximizing moment, just like pure competition. The difference is we find the quantity just like before, but the difference is to find how much we're going to make, we get the price here. That's going to start telling us the total revenue. We're going to figure out the total cost. We'll talk about that next time. This time's really just about the marginal revenue and how the marginal revenue line is underneath the demand line. We'll be using that diagram next time in Monopoly number three when we further our discussion about profits and use this diagram again to show profits in a monopoly market. See you there.